there, sort of terraces away from the corner, that's administrative office buildings. Those people that book and manage the convention facilities, we're gonna move them off site and go um, out towards the curb line and up. So that'll be up to 95 feet at that height. Um, that's the most appropriate location for that height because we don't shadow into your Berlin Gardens to the north or into the children's gardens to the south. Um, and it's connected to the existing facilities. So um, you'll see some of that there. Do you level the garage? The garage the street? across the street? Across the, no, we originally thought about expanding there. It's an older garage with significantly higher zoning. Um, so we had talked about rebuilding the garage repurposing convention below, garage at street grade, and hotel above. Um, but it was a bigger campus expansion coordination effort with the MPA, with convention facilities, with the private developer. And we knew we figured we could do it in our site. Um, it's a potential long-term, you know, 15 year down the road kind of concept, but it's a, something we very much consider. Um, as part of the project, not only are we building these, this additional 300,000 square feet, repurposing existing, so we actually add 420,000 square feet to the, the building, um, but we're going to make a lot of um, uh, public improvements in the surrounding public realm. Uh, we've been working very closely with some of the surrounding stakeholders from Mary McHugh of MJM Management to John Erbeling of Todco to uh, the Planning Department, the Bike uh, Coalition, the MTA and others to talk about widening sidewalks, improving pedestrian crossings. Um, and one of the new things is we're going to introduce what we're calling a Paseo from the third. So um, just south of that comparing sculpture where the building will come up, um, it's, it's sort of that awkward pedestrian treatment where you have to come in away from the street above the parking, uh, the entrance for the trucks. Um, we're going to move that whole ramp south get rid of the, it's kind of two-way ramp that comes up to the mid-block, we'll get rid of the southern one, move to the northern one south, and then the sidewalk can be much wider there, and then we'll introduce a new connection, which you'll see in the photographs here, um, from third into the children's gardens, when you can say it. So if you're living over in Museum Park, now you don't have to walk two and a half blocks around the corner uh, to get to uh, the children's playground, you can cut right in through there. Oh, I'm sorry, I should wait till you talk. The, uh, t the line, the subway, how close is the subway going to be to, to all this? The central subway comes up on 4th Street and is under construction now. Um, the station will be at 4th and Folsom. So if you're coming up from the South Bay, um, you would get out at 4th and Folsom or from the North Bay, um, cross over Folsom and you'd be on to the campus. Um, unfortunately, it was too difficult with the tube of the uh, train itself to have a direct connection into the convention center, so you do have to come out into the street to go back in. It makes it easier for the convention center to have accreditation because it's really just that one public show a year. You need to have your badge and pay your dues to get in. So um, we're working on some of the pedestrian improvements at that crossing at Clementina um, as part of that site, as well as some along third and fourth where um, there's obstructions in the right of way from street poles to public benches to street furniture from neighboring cafes, and in some places the sidewalk gets close to its minimum ADA width of five feet, um, and we're looking at opportunities to widen that so that on days when there's a sales force or similar convention in town and a lot of pedestrians on the street, um, people can get by whether or not they're associated with the convention. Um, we're also making some small um, uh, expansion to the, to the children's gardens itself. Uh, and in introducing a new top one. <coughs> back there, there's that great slide. It's a lot of use. It's really kind of middle-aged kids. Um, smaller kids have the uh, uh, smaller kids have the, the um, uh, sands to play in, but there isn't like under four-year-old uh, appropriate equipment there. And we're going to create a new top lot. Um, may or may not have noticed there's a learning garden kind of tucked around into the corner where they grow vegetables and teach kids about urban agriculture. Um, we're going to bring that out more into the sunlight and more into the public view and create a, a larger space for them uh, and then repurpose the lawn. You'll see some of those pictures here. Uh, we've also worked with the fire marshal to reduce some of um, some of the emergency egress that's dedicated to the center and make that shared use so you can still get out in the case of a fire in the building. Um, but it's public space when it's not. Um, yeah, there's some great, <laughs> great stuff here. Thank you. Um, and uh, let's see what else. We've got 
got improvements to the public realm. Um, the planning department is separately looking at a number of air, um, improvements in the neighborhood you may be familiar with called the Central Soma area plan. Um, that most likely, though, that is separate from our project, is going to result in a changed configuration of Howard Street from the one-way to a two-way street, um, similarly on Folsom. So our design is flexible enough to accommodate both those. In fact, the two-way makes it easier for buses to drop off in both directions because buses always exit yeah. on the right, and it's easier as you're going uh, westbound than east on the south side. So, um, a lot of significant improvements and changes to come. We're going to improve uh, the, uh, the bridge that currently cuts across Howard from your Buena to the south. Really now it's about a 12-foot sidewalk, but we're going to make it uh, have art on site, some seating, um, the building closer and open up the plaza there by the carousel. Uh, increase the size of the cafe that's uh, next to it, the kind of existing hot dog stand, carousel cafe. Um, we're not touching any of the existing cultural or arts facilities, the carousel, the ice rink, the bowling alley, the job care center, they're all going to stay as it is. So um, it's been a very intricate um, puzzle piece to fit into the, the neighborhood, but I think the final proposal that we have is, uh, is an exciting um, and successful one that works well with all the various uh, interests in the, in the neighborhood. So um, with that general overview, as you kind of look through pictures, if there's any questions I can help answer or anything else I can further. Okay, this thing that we're passing around, is that available on the net? Uh, it is. Is this PDF file or, or PowerPoint? Uh, I believe there is a PDF on our um, project website, uh -huh. which is MosconiExpansion.com. Okay. Uh, What's your current square footage? Uh, it's a good question because the, we're in three buildings, Moscone North, South, and West. Um, I believe it's about 1.2 million square feet. So I just had a question, uh, which I always wondered about. Um, maybe you know the answer, maybe not. Um, you know how they worked in the center and various things and, and whatnot. And you know, you're talking about the uh, walkway or the connector between north and south. And I always wondered when they like you know, put up in you know, west that they didn't have some sort of like you know tunnel underground or or overpass like over. It. Yeah, two things. We, we looked at that. Yeah, um, sure. One of the challenges is Central Subway goes under this, the right of way on 4th, so you have um, trains and a very large tube going under the street. So in order to connect um, Moscone North to Moscone West, you'd have to either bridge over the top, and the planning department doesn't uh, look fondly on bridges in San Francisco. Um, we're putting in a bridge as part of this project, but um, it was very... Uh, tightly orchestrated and they, their words were if um, bridges are an exception in San Francisco, you need to make the exception exceptional. <laughs> um, and so there's a, a possibility that they would entertain that in the future. It creates shadow effects on the streets and, and it's not something they like to do. To go underground, you have to go down um, a whole two stories to clear mm -hmm. the central subway and come back up. So you have uh, significant cost of utility relocation, yeah. and then you also have the difficulty with ADA requirements of getting down and back up. So it just has it was to just a cost of all that's all it's that's challenging. Crazy, yeah. yeah, I mean, unlike San Francisco's convention center is very different than Las Vegas and Boston. These places are out in the suburbs or out by the airport, where they're huge. They're on greenfield development sites. You can do whatever you want. You have a yeah. huge footprint, and you can start from scratch. We've built it in phases within an already developed part of town, um, which has affected its design. But it's also made it the most successful per square foot of any place in the country, because people come here because it's in San Francisco, and you can walk out the door and meet down Exactly, it's right in the center of it. What do you need from us? What would you like from us? Uh, you know, letters of support are always helpful. We'll be before the Planning Commission with the final EIR in August. Um, because I know they, because they got the commentary in next Monday. Next Monday. So the comments are really about the adequacy of the EIR, what did they study or fail to study, um, and they trigger the planning department to write a formal response to any comment. Um, if it's a project that ABD6 supports, it would be more helpful to do a letter of support to, um, to the board, to the planning department, um, to the mayor that could be then 
shown to uh, the commission and the board of supervisors that this is a project that the city is done. Board member, secretary, Second it, and I suggest we have a link to it. To the. Uh, I have. I have that information. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Any favor. other questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? There you go. Sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Captain Bill Raldi, I'm new captain at Southern Station. I took over about three weeks ago from Captain Mike Revin, who was promoted to uh, the commander of the Metro Division, so now he's my boss. Uh, very happy to be here uh, to meet this community group. I've been meeting groups uh, within the last three weeks while I've been here. I'm looking forward to working with the community to help solve their problems and to reduce crime in the Southern District, which is part of uh, D6. So. Happy to answer any questions you have. Um, brought one of my right hand men with me, uh, Simon Chaney, is our current officer, and Marissa Rodriguez from DA's office. Uh, she's been a great asset to uh, Captain Redmond when he was there, and been a great uh, support for me while she's been here, too. So she's a great uh, um, resource to have, um, especially when dealing with uh, crimes in the district that we need her help on. I have one question. Um, 969 Market. 969 Market is a, um, <coughs> an old um, stationery store or art store that currently they want to develop into a brew a pub. It's a three-story building that they're going to have the, uh, the brew making equipment on the basement floor uh, with um, food and beverage on the other floors. We met with them a couple weeks ago, no, about a week ago, and um, they want to uh, also um, go out to the um, the um, convention um, people that when conventions come in town that they'll have private parties at their space too. Um, they really don't know who's going to manage the place yet. They um, they want to open by July 23rd, right, Simon? Uh, yes. 22nd or 23rd, 22nd or 23rd uh, but they really didn't have a you know business plan of what they wanted to do yet. So there's still a lot of things that they have to go through with the analysis of the planning department, but with also uh, ABC and um, the Entertainment Commission. And they won't be over by July with ABC. Yeah. Well, they also have a pending hearing before the Entertainment Commission next Tuesday for the POE meeting and. Uh, they could currently apply for their extended hours POV as well. And that's what sort of we were worried about is um, uh, late night, really late night on the nine or block market. Because while it's better on the prime side, it could get it could still be better. And one of my biggest concerns I have is um, People who are intoxicated, texting, walking out of uh, places like this, not paying attention and making themselves a victim. And there's just enough criminal elements still around out there, and that's a real concern for me. So maybe something you can express to these these individuals is that concern. Yeah, we did express that concern to them. You know, our concern is all the public safety and the, and the safety of the, the people that actually live in the neighborhood too. Good neighbor policy. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um, you what know, are you doing yourself from? Oh, 
Hello, my name is um, Gerald Banks. Um, I live at 124 Turk, um, resident in the area, and a member of the Alliance for 36. Um, that thing, that, that nonprofit building, St. Francis, uh, the Franciscan, wherever it is, uh, is becoming a menace where they have that covering. I'm yeah, right here at the corner. This is, this yeah, this this is, this is Southern. Right? Oh, this is Southern. It's all. Southern. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I wanted to ask you about was the OMG at uh, 4360 Street. <clears throat> what was going on with them? Uh, they're still waiting from the permit bureau for their judicial permit. Is there, any, is there any timeline on that? Uh, as far as we know, no. It's all going through a uh, plan. That's all called planning. Thank you. Welcome. Sergeant. Okay. Good evening. I'm uh, Sergeant Kempinski. I'm a patrol supervisor here in the Tenderloin. Uh, Captain Chernis, my commanding officer, asked me to fill in for him tonight. He is more in touch with the liaison with the community and businesses, the residents, than I am, but uh, I do know that he is continuing uh, Captain Garrity's long history of looking for non-traditional, non-law enforcement um, strategies for dealing with uh, crime in the Tenderloin, resolving the problem. Captain Chernis is uh, completely committed to soliciting participation in community meetings and the strategy sessions that he has set up that uh, uh, more and more businesses are becoming aware of. There's always been a push for resident groups to participate with the strategizing, but the businesses uh, are a little more challenging because a lot of these meetings are after business hours. So he's continuing that effort. Uh, they, uh, another thing that might be going on is, uh, you may not know, but there was a, a large shooting at the corner of Turk and Taylor where eight people were shot. And since that uh, evening, we've had officers posted there 24-7, and that has helped tremendously. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, loitering, uh, drug public intoxication, uh, uh, other issues, drug dealing, have been increased in the areas uh, surrounding that, that, that area where there's a strong police presence. And the captain is aware of that. He has instituted uh, quite a bit of enforcement in the unit block of Eddy Street. Uh, people that live here just in the next block, I'm sure, have noticed that the number of people that are loitering in that block has doubled recently. So uh, the <coughs> captain has facilitated all kinds of uh, strategies for dealing with that. DPW has washed down three times a week. There is enforcement, uh, increased enforcement of uh, parking and traffic safety pedestrian violations, and uh, the officers that are assigned to Turk and Taylor also work the four block circle. So they're also addressing that. And there has been, I, at least I've seen some uh, improvement. The uh, other thing is the police department did a survey in May, the Investigations Bureau, and they found that the Tenderloin has the highest percentage of uh, rebookings with the uh, prosecutions that are approved by the district attorney's office of the uh, 10 district stations. So uh, I think that you know, that's a great accomplishment. And I'm sure so, that's right. Uh, so we're very proud of that. Uh, the Tenderloin has got a lot of challenging crime problems. And so when we're able to uh, do our job in a way that the district attorney can take it to the next level, that's always uh, helps with uh, long-term solutions. So that's uh, an honor that uh, we're very proud of. And I think that the residents of this area should be made aware of. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, sir, I, I hate to ask, but I'm dying to ask this. I'm <coughs> doing I am. I have to apply. Uh, a lot of us uh, are, are really worried because, um, well, dirt closed down, and we're worried about 
our people might be a crossfire 